Hi, I'm Trisha Stanley from Inspiration Laboratories, and you're joining us for our second spooky Halloween science hangout. And I'm here with uh, several other vloggers, and we have some great ideas for creepy crawlies and candy science today. And so we're going to combine the two and actually make um, creepy crawlies out of candy. And we're just going to have a simple little way to show um, insect anatomy, or you can even do spiders or whatever other creepy crawlies you'd like to do. Um, and if we make a little insect, we have marshmallows. And I put it on a toothpick. We've got three different marshmallows, one for the head, one for the thorax, and one for the abdomen. And then your six little insect legs will go attached to the middle of the thorax there. Yes. <laughs> I miss them. Aiden's over here helping me with them, or really just eating marshmallows, because, you know. And then these would, I've got um, the pool and pill licorice, and we can just attach as their little legs. And once you get them all together, that's what Are you I think. A the caterpillar? No, this one is going to be something like an ant, if I get the legs in there. Well, anyway. You can see what I'm doing if you want to. Liz, why are you doing that? Huh? Why are you doing I'm that? With it. I think my legs might be a little too long. But we put all our three things over here, and we have kind of a little insect. If you can make it with shorter legs, but you it's have it. a spider. You can add antenna, antenna. No, a spider would just be two. Let's see. If the spider would be two. Where is. There we go. And then a spider would have eight legs out of the cephalothorax, and then two little pinchers and two little mouth part fangs. But we'd need big marshmallows to make spiders. Yeah. Should have grabbed them. And then you can add your little antenna off of them and wings if you have wings. That would be a good idea too. Don't you think? Yeah. Anyway, our simple little candy ones that you need to figure out a better way to attaching the licorice to the marshmallows. Or maybe I should have had bigger marshmallows. So anyway, everybody else has other great ideas as well. So I'm going to pass it on to Emma for some candy science. Hi everyone. Hello, it's all good now. <laughs> right, we're going to make a potion using um, popping candies. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so first Hannah's just going to try some. Can you try a little bit? Just a little bit. Put it in your mouth. What happens? It pops. It pops. It fizzes, doesn't it? And that's because when it's made, it's exposed to a gas called carbon dioxide, which gets trapped inside. And then when you put it in your mouth, the saliva in your mouth breaks down the outer layer on the candy, releases the gas, and that's why it seems to pop. So um, for our Halloween theme, we've got a potion. Now this one you can actually drink, so it's just um, purple grape juice. So Hannah is going to tip some into there. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Tip it in. Not sure if you can hear that, but there's lots of fizzing going on here, isn't there? Can you give it a little stir? Yeah. Can I need stir? So we can see the popping candy breaking down, and we can see the bubbles coming up, and we can hear it as well. Can you hear all the bubbles? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's our potion. Um, something else we've done recently, um, not with candy, but along the potion line. Is we've gone outside with the bowl, we found a stick to stir it with, we filled the water with mud, leaves, pine cones, anything we can find, then we put some baking powder on top, but then we've dropped vinegar on top of that and watched it all bubble up, which has been really cool as well. Um, so that's our experiment, and I'm passing over to Megan. Okay, sorry, I was having a little trouble with the muting and the unmuting there. So, hi, I'm Megan um, from Coffee Cups and Crayons, and I also have a little bit of candy science for you. Um, I'm going to try to, I'm going to hold it up and then try to, I'm going to try to do both. Um, anyway, so what I did was took a couple M&Ms and a couple Skittles and dropped them in water, and um, it totally worked, but it might be a little bit hard to see. I'm going to really try. So what happens is when you put them in the water, the little letters, the M's and the S on the Skittles, 
um, as it starts to break down and dissolve, they'll float up to the top because the sugar coating is going to dissolve in the water faster than the little letters because they don't. They must be made out of something different. I should have found out what. I could find that out if some anybody else doesn't know. <laughs> but the the candy coating that is the sugar is going to break down quicker. So the M. I'm going to do this very carefully so you can see it because we have a little floating. Let's see, let's see, can you see the M floating? The S has been floating for a while. The, um, the Skittles must have uh, even more sugarific coating on them. So the S popped off really fast, and then the S itself sort of dis disintegrate like, much quicker than the M's. But it's kind of a fun little experiment to do with your candy and um, kind of talk about how, you know, different things dissolve in water and you could try it again with a different type of soap liquids and see if the same things happen or if different things happen and kind of, you know, extend the learning from there too. Thanks. I think Penny is going to come down with a super cool. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Um, my name is Penny Whitehouse. I'm from uh, Wildlife Fund for Kids. And I'll mainly be talking about um, how to encourage a love of the creepy crawlies um, you know, during this wonderful Halloween festive season. So it's really good to be able to um, you know, get to know them a little bit more and probably not be as scared about them as most children become, especially about spiders. <laughs> but um, my first um, activity, I've got two that I wanted to share with you, but I can't really do them from here. The first activity is um, using pretty much just a white sheet and going outside and laying it underneath the tree. It's just amazing because all you have to do is get your little kids to shake the tree really, really hard and all the insects and spiders fall straight off onto the white piece, um, the white sheet underneath. And you just sit there, you might all all you need really is, you know, a magnifying glass and a little bug, you know, bug catcher. And you can sit there for ages just looking at them. I think one day we did it and we had over nine species of bugs and spiders. So it was just amazing to be able to have a good look at it. Make sure you have a really good tree that has lots of foliage as well, because it's just, you know, the more foliage, the more you're going to have aphids and little, you know, creepy crawlies on there. So that's a really good one to get outside and get to know those creepy crawlies that everyone's a little bit scared of, but they're not that scary after all. And then um, another one that I want to encourage you to do is during the Halloween season um, is to maybe keep some creepy crawlies as pets. You know, it might just be only for a week or um, a month or you might keep them for even longer. So things like uh, mealworms, which are those kind of squirmy, um, worm-like animals, they're actually the larvae stage of a little black beetle, but they can be handled and touched and they, they're actually really good for Halloween because they, they look scary and they squirm and, you know, and kids absolutely love them. They're great for a sensory feel with, you know, your fingertips. Um, so they're really good as well as crickets, having little crickets. I actually have a cricket here. That's one of my posts that I'm doing so, soon. So I do actually have kind of crickets. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them. I might turn them around. can't even really see them there. I might pull one out in a minute. <laughs> might be easy to see a cricket if I pull one out. Um, but another animal that might be a really good idea to have um, as a pet is a snail too. So snails are really cool little pets. Um, but with all animals, it's really important to obviously encourage hygiene and to make sure that they are supervised with the animals. You don't, um, you don't want them being put in, in a child's mouth, especially the snails. Um, so I'll get a little cricket out. And I work in a zoo, so I'm very comfortable with crickets. <laughs> but I usually feed them out to animals. <laughs> but this time we've actually got them and um, the kids love playing with them. Oh, come here. I should catch them faster. Where are you? Okay, here he is. There's only a young one. I'll put him right up to the camera. Can you see him? Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. There he is. <laughs> so kids can actually hold them and touch them. Um, you know, it's really nice a tactile activity to have one and to learn about them too and see what they eat and watch them, you know, shed their exoskeletons. So they're learning a lot about it as well as connecting with those creepy crawlies at a time when creepy crawlies are really huge in the Halloween world. Um, so I'll pass it over to Trisha. Um, thank you for listening. Hi, thanks so much. Awesome. We actually built our little insect. Aiden helped me with it. And <laughs> I still can't figure out how to pick it up with the thing, but you can kind of see him there. He's got the 
shorter legs now, so that works better. The six legs on the thorax, and there's the abdomen, and then the head has the antenna. And so it could be a little ant, maybe. And then he wants to have more bug sticks. Apparently he's calling the toothpicks, um, which is fun. But just a great opportunity to talk about the parts of the insects and get them excited for going out and seeing them, like Penny said. And then, of course, you can always take that extra candy and do some um, experiments with them and do the popping, potion, make some potions and see the little floating letters like Megan had. But thanks for joining us, and have a great Halloween. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.